So the 12 days of OTR Essential Christmas continues 2020 style. Aren't you excited? I know I am. We're getting close to the end of the list, which means it's almost Christmas time. Hooray! But nonetheless, now that we're at the end of 2020, only makes sense logically to do what most everybody is, I think, really anxiously looking forward to doing, which is turning the calendar to 2021. And I'm certainly ready to do that. I know probably all of you are as well. And with that in mind, I wanted to take a look ahead and give you five wrestlers I think are poised to break out in 2021. Now, a couple of qualifiers here. I'm not including anybody from like an Impact Wrestling or a New Japan. So I'm not talking about somebody like a Dashing Chris Bay or somebody like a... Um, Kota Ibushi. I'm not talking about guys like that because I don't watch that product. So I can't really truly say it. Like I just don't watch it at all. Even like the big shows, the pay-per-views, I don't watch them. So no real exposure to it. I, I just am el eliminating them. Also, when I think about five people poised for breakouts in 2021, I'm also eliminating anybody that either is currently a champion or going, you know, has been a world champion in the company that they're in. Because if I was going to say uh, five people poised to break out in 2021, it's Roman Reigns. Who gives a crap about the other four? Because yes, you could be the champion and certainly break out and become an even bigger star because that's what the Tribal Chief will do. We're not doing that. So I'm not talking about any of those guys. I'm not going to throw out there like an Adam Cole. Bye -bye. I'm not going to sit there and throw out somebody like a Kenny Omega or John Moxley or people like that because you know, they've already either been champion or are currently the champion. Like, nah. I'm trying to look a little deeper and try to identify those between specifically AEW and everybody under the WWE umbrella, which includes NXT. Those five people that I've got my eyes on the most as we look ahead to the new year. Now, some of the names you will not see on this list for AEW are Hangman Adam Page, Miro, Cody, like I certainly could have went with Cody here, but I really didn't want to because there's a part of me that says, you know, he's got a little too much power in the company to where he can really control and manipulate what he does. So whether they put him in charge of a faction or he's wrestling Sting at some point in time, like, I don't really think that's a breakout. Like, relative to the competition, he's, he's pretty well established, even though technically he hasn't been a world champion in AEW. Uh, more importantly, they'll fuck Cody Rhodes, so he's not on this list. Miro, I don't trust AEW with him. Do you? Do you? And then Hangman Adam Page. Um, I'm not sure that they're sure with him. And I think that part of the problem is, is that they try to feature too many people and try to get everybody over instead of focusing on a guy like a Hangman Adam Page who they should be really trying to get over. Um... I could have went with somebody off of Team Taz. You could have picked one. Ricky Starks, certainly. Powerhouse Hobbs, Brian Cage. Uh, but I did not put them on the list. And as far as WWE, you know, the biggest omission from this list is admittedly going to be Keith Lee. And it's not because I don't think he could do it. Can't do it. I certainly think he could. It's not because I don't want him to do it. You know, my history by now, I certainly would. It just comes down to Vince McMahon. And I don't know if I trust Vince McMahon enough to get behind Keith Lee enough to allow him to truly break out. I hope I'm wrong, but we're talking about Vince here. And at this point in time, even when you go beyond the, the pigment issue, we're just talking about Vince. Who the hell knows what he's thinking about from one moment to the next? So... Some of those names you might throw on your list, and you're certainly welcome into the comments to tell me who are your five wrestlers between AEW and WWE that you think are poised for a big breakout in 2021, and that's fine. Please do. I'm curious to see if I left some people off. I want to see what you guys have to say. Um, that said, this is my list, and these are my top five from 54321, and if you don't like it, humbug on your ass. Number five, Damian Priest. There's a part of me that looks at him in NXT and says he's waiting to break through and get to that next level within that brand. And at some point in time this upcoming year, I could see him potentially being transitioned to maybe Raw 
and getting at least some type of decent push in that year. And you might say, well, going from NXT champion to mid-card of Raw is not exactly breaking out. Hey, when you're in the mid-card of NXT right now and in a year, you're in the mid-card of a brand that's doing twice the viewership, yeah, that's a bit of a breakout. I could also see this company, and specifically Vince, looking at him and saying, that's my Raw Roman! But, but not totally. That could also potentially hurt Damian Priest. But you look at him, he's got a bit of a cool factor. He's got decent size. He can move a little bit. Like I, He's somebody that I see that has some potential, that has some upside, that I think, if the cards play out right, could have himself a pretty big year coming up. I really do. Uh, number four, Darby Allen. This is an example of where I'm not the biggest on the character. It doesn't appeal to me that much. There certainly is a segment of that audience that absolutely loves Darby Allen, and I will at least give credit where credit is due. They try to feature him like a character, and I think they do a relatively good job, all things considered. Um, and I think he does well to be a little different and be a little mysterious, and again, I kind of like that and respect and appreciate that. So you're talking about a guy that your base largely likes, um, and you're putting him in good spots like... Who knows what's to come and manifest out of this tease back and forth between him and Sting. But let's just say him and Sting do some business together, whether that's a tag match working together, tag match working against each other, singles match working against each other. They're just aligned in some way. I, I would be very, very surprised if Darby Allen isn't in store for an even bigger 2021. Like to me, if you want to talk about some of these names on the list and you could say, yeah, you know what? Um, I could argue with you. I don't think you can argue with this one because it certainly seems like he's being very well positioned. Number three is Big E. Like right now, to me, he's screaming out Royal Rumble winner, Royal Rumble winner. There's one problem with that. The one thing that makes me hedge the bet here a little bit and not go all bullish or bearish on Big E. And that is right now your two champs are Drew and Roman. And I don't know if they're going to be in a position where they want either one of those guys to lose come WrestleMania. And when it comes to Big E, it is one of these situations where if you're going to go there, you must go the distance. You must go all the way there and you must make him the world champion at WrestleMania. We'll see what happens there. A lot of maneuvering you could do in the months to come to make that happen. But personally, I think it absolutely needs to happen. And now that he's broken away from the New Day, like this is Big E's chance to really make it on his own. It's really his chance to stand out on his own and for a company that is desperate for star power right now, for personality, for charisma, for characters, Big E fits a lot of those bills. So if I look at the end of 2021, a year from now, and I say at the end of next year, if Big E hasn't been world champion, if Big E hasn't been one of the top guys of the year for WWE, then something went drastically and dramatically wrong. It was either an injury or Vince's stupidity. And probably the second one. Number two, Bianca Belair. And I think part of this is just the fact that the competition in the women's division isn't as great as it would be, let's say, relative to a Keith Lee having to navigate a lot of things in order to get his spot or Big E to navigate to his spot. Like the, the women could kind of rotate in and out a little quicker. And you would assume Becky Lynch is still going to be out for a period of time. We'll see what they do with the returning Charlotte. But there is certainly an opportunity for Bianca Belair on SmackDown, on the show that feels like it's better suited for her, that kind of network television audience, you know, that it's going to be her and Sasha Banks that are carrying that women's division on SmackDown in 2021 until, of course, they screw it all up. Uh, but Bianca Belair has a great look. You know, she has a unique kind of style, both in terms of ring presentation, but also just her, you know, actual material style. She's got to me. She's got star written all over her, and I can't believe I see so many people that disagree with that. It's really stunning to me. But I would actually have more confidence in her getting to that spot than I would a Big E in terms of top, in terms of relative to where they're at. Of course, as I was compiling this list and I was thinking about it, and I even asked some of you on Twitter about it, and quite a few of you put that out there. I also was just reminded the fact that she just lost a Bailey clean on SmackDown last week. So anything pertaining to anybody on Vince's shows, whether it's Raw, SmackDown, NXT, doesn't matter. You're really rolling the dice here.
Because it could totally be her, but it could also be another woman that just entirely takes over the scene. It absolutely could be. And I wouldn't be surprised if they screwed her up. I hope to God they don't, because they're losing money when they do that. But it's WWE. You don't put anything past Vince for him to screw it up at this point. But I think beyond question, the number one wrestler that's poised for a breakout in 2021, even though I hesitate to think that he even really needs to break out, is MJF. He hasn't been world champ in AEW yet. As a result, he makes the list, and he's number one. He's the guy that presents a lot of what AEW doesn't have a lot of. He brings the ability to talk. He brings the ability to maximize his camera time. He brings the ability to show that star presence that kind of commands your attention. He can put himself over. He can put his opponents over in the right way as a heel. He can get legit heat. Like everything about him just screams future star for that company. And when you look ahead to 2021, you know, you could talk about the Kenny Omega title run right now, but eventually y'all will get over that and you'll realize that, as Cornette would say, Kenny Olivier ain't that great. Um, and eventually they'll come to their senses and they'll figure out somehow, some way to put that strap on an MJF in 2021. And if I was thinking for a money feud right now, from the natural storytelling elements that it could embody, the chemistry between the two of them, like, if you're looking ahead to, like, an all-in pay-per-view, give me Darby Allen chasing a heel champion MJF. Is you could even then, you could find an excuse to bring Cody back into the title picture. You could bring Moxley back at him. Like, you've got a Jericho, like, assuming Jericho turns face because MJF and the inner circle turn on him. Like, there are so many possibilities here. And you've positioned MJF so well. You've got the heater with him in Wardlow. You've put him in inner circle, so he's being associated with Jericho. He's getting the rub there. But eventually, if you want to have him turn on Jericho, you could certainly set that up and you could do some business there to kind of get you through the beginning part of the year. I, I think right now, when you look at their skills, their talents, where they're at, how they've been positioned, I would be absolutely floored and stunned if MJF wasn't the breakout star of 2021. And I'd be really disappointed and frankly kind of pissed off with the folks in charge of AEW if he isn't world champ at some point in time this upcoming year. Because if he's not, then I'm just wondering, what the hell are you guys looking at? What do you guys value? What are you doing? Because in a land of, in some cases, misfit toys, where you try to feature everybody, this is one of the few guys that you make sure to feature relatively consistently because you know damn good and well he can deliver the goods. So that's my list of the five wrestlers that I think are most and best poised for a big breakout in 2021. That's Damian Priest, Darby Allen, Big E, Bianca Belair, and MJF. Again, that's my list. Humbug on your ass if you don't like it. Let me know what you think about my list, though, seriously. And let me know who you would have on your list. Again, sticking into the parameters of what I've outlined, I can't be a work. Couldn't have been a world champion already in their current show or current brand. Um, and it's AEW or WWE Umbrella. So Raw, SmackDown, NXT. That's it. No Impact. No New Japan. No other bubblefuck indies that I've never watched and never heard of and don't care about. Okay? Okay. So that's it for this fifth day of OTRS Central Christmas. we got four more days to go. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Click the bell. What the hell? That way you're notified of future videos. I'll see you tomorrow with the next installment.